Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to organize your photos uh, on Mac in iPhoto so that you never have to scroll endlessly again and tell your friends, hold on, it's somewhere here. Sure, Apple uh, does do some auto sorting by year for instance, but I don't know about you, my photo library has all sorts of things from pictures of noodles packaging that I might repurchase one day from like five years ago to my hair growth journey photo diary to actual memories and all I want is to be able to sit down with a clean album and look through memories from my past year without bumping into a ton of duplicates and a ton of screenshots. I have a way for you and I'm gonna teach you in 10 minutes, it's gonna change your life. I invite you to think of organizing photos like you think of GTD. You have a container, an inbox where all your unprocessed photos land and from time to time you sort through them. I do this sorting four to five times per year. It takes me 15 to 20 minutes and my feed is always super clean and I can find anything in seconds. Now, I suggest that you follow this video along on a computer, take out your laptop. If you've been organizing, trying to organize your photos on your phone before, I can tell that you've been wasting a lot of time. I've tried this, it does not work as well as it does on the computer. So take out your laptop and follow along. All right, first thing I want you to do is turn on iCloud for your photos. This way, all the photos that you take on your phone will automatically sync to your computer. I personally pay $2.99 per month for iCloud storage of 200 gigabytes, and I currently have five years worth of photos and videos on my in my cloud, iCloud, <laughs> in the cloud, and that means it will last me for another 15 years, unless photo sizes change dramatically or something like this. So I think it's a pretty good plan. Now, before we start, it is important that you understand what are the four ways, four main ways, how your photos end up from different sources in your iPhoto library. The first one, if your iCloud is on, they're automatically a sync. Whenever you take a screenshot or you take a picture on your phone, they end up in the photo app and automatically sync to your computer. Second option, if you take pictures with a camera, then you manually import them, plug in the card, import them into the iPhoto app. If someone sends you pictures by iMessage messages, you just save the pictures into your photo feed. And again, they sync uh, into iPhoto on your computer. And then Finally, if you downloaded a picture from the internet onto your computer, your desktop, your download folder, for the image to end up in the iPhoto app, you need to right click it, select share and add to photos and then it will be in the iPhoto app. And now let's get to the interesting stuff. So you want to set up a, an inbox container in your iPhotos app. If you watched any of my previous videos, you know I'm a big fan of this concept. I collect ideas, tasks, everything into inboxes that I then process regularly. And that allows me to capture really good nuggets and not forget anything. And same for photos. We don't want to be sorting as we're taking pictures. We also don't want to take pictures without ever sorting them. I mean, we can, but you are probably watching this video because it bothers you. So what you want to do is use the smart folder um, option in the iPhoto. You go to albums, create, create new smart album, name it as the current year. So 2025, if that's when you're watching it. And then you want to set two conditions. You want photos captured between, so in the range of the 1st of January and 31st of, 31st of December. And what did I press here? 1st of January and 31st of December, the photos will be ending up in this folder unless, and we need to add a second rule, unless they are already sorted in some kind of album. So album is not any. And you can see that right now in this library, I have 492 basically unsorted pictures from the year 2025. So I can go ahead and I'll just test because I already have this folder so I don't confuse them. And yeah, they're all 457 photos and 35 videos. 
Before we start sorting, we need to create our permanent albums. And this is a very personal creative process. It all depends on how you think you will be accessing these images. When I organize mine, I ask myself in what context do I want to be looking at them? And my main use case is that I love to review my year as a kind of photo, photo diary when I can see the photos in the chronological order. I've I've traveled here, I met this person, I ate this, I bought this, just like, you know, sort of flip through the photos and reconstruct the year in my head. So I personally always create these annual albums, 2025, 2024, 2023, and so on. But sometimes there are big events like Christmas when we take hundreds of pictures and they can overwhelm this kind of experience for me when I sit down and review my year. So Christmas, for instance, always gets its own folder, um, 2024 Christmas, 2023 Christmas, and so on. Same goes for teaching um, in my case, because I teach, sometimes we take pictures in class, we take many of them, and while it would be totally fine for me to have one or two pictures of my classroom within my annual, um, annual feed, I don't wanna be stuck flipping through 80 pictures of me in front of whiteboard and of my students as I am reviewing my year. So anything like this that is very large, in my case, gets it, its own folder just based on how I would like to access and consume and enjoy basically these albums in the future. And then there is my reference folder, which is really amazing because I can find things like if I had some kind of food, a long, long time ago that I enjoyed that I don't see myself repurchasing immediately, but maybe in a couple of years, I'll be like, oh, what was that thing? I can just save it here and easily find it. Th same goes for um, skincare. Like when I use a product up, if I liked it, but I'm not repurchasing, I will always snap a picture so that if in two or three years or five years or 10 years, I wanna get it again, I have a picture of it. Um, I also track, um, like I've had a lot of hair loss during the pandemic and I'm, I don't know if it will ever grow back out, but I am tracking what's happening on top of my head, because especially because I cannot see it unless I snap a picture. So I have these images here. Same goes for a body evolution. While I have my weight tracked in my Willings app, I also like to see how the body looks, not just the numbers, because as we are swapping muscle for fat mass as we age, you know, if, even if the number is more or less the same, just things do not look the same anymore. So I like, I like tracking that. Books that I've, you know, whenever I go to the bookshop, I see a good book. I do less of that now. Um, I tend to download a Kindle sample. So you'll see I stopped here in 2023, but for a while that's how I use this folder as well. One thing I wanna say that I, I mentioned this in my previous videos, I always say do not build structures before you identify the need for them. So I would just drop all of my photos in reference first. And then when some kind of patterns would emerge, if I see, oh, I have a big chunk of photos that refer to this particular topic, let's say cooking or skincare or outfits, whatever, then I would create a separate album for them. But basically right now we have an inbox folder and we have our albums, uh, which is the year, or maybe some reference albums. And that's our setup that we're working with. You're totally free to stop at this point. You already have the building blocks, but basically here's what the next step looks like that you can take now, or you can take next weekend or in a month or whatever. Once every few months, whenever I feel like it, I will get on my computer. No, don't do it on your phone. It's just, yeah. I'll get on my computer, I open the smart folder for the current year, because ideally I've cleaned out the smart folders from all my previous years, so I'll open this one, and I will start processing. How do I process these folders? So processing here means emptying it out to zero by reassigning these pictures to my different folders. So first of all, I always work by category, I find it Plus, I mean, it's just easier. So screenshots, I feel, is a great place to start because to be honest, most of them in my case are just trash. So I'll select the category here and then I'll adjust, I'll adjust the thumbnail size um, 
to a point where I can sort of make the decision about where this photo goes without necessarily opening it. That's one way. Or another way, I will just, uh, like if I cannot tell from, you know, these thumbnails, because otherwise I would just hold, hold shift and select multiple photos or hold command and select just selected photos and then pre press backspace if I don't need them and delete them or if they belong to a certain um, album I would just drop them into that album and by the way when I do drop them uh, they will disappear from our inbox automatically and let me show you this let's say well I, I don't necessarily want to say anything here maybe Maybe this quote, and I want to drop it into quotes. It's gone. Why is it gone? Because we set up our smart album to not contain any photos that were assigned in an album. And since now it's in the album quotes, uh, that's why it was taken out automatically out of our inbox. And um, yeah, I that's just what I do. Um, if I am not able to make a decision by just looking at them on in the feed, I will uh, open the picture and then I will go very quickly one by one, kind of like this. Um, that was just me trying this uh, eyeshadows from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, they have an online tool to try them on. So I'll do that. And once I see a picture, let's say, oh, I actually want to save this one. Then I go back. By pressing escape, I select everything that I just looked at up until this picture that I think is trash, press backspace, delete, drag this picture where it I think it belongs and continue from here on onwards. It goes fairly fast. I usually need like I have, I think 400, 500 files here. I'm pretty sure I would be able to do it under, to just sort through them under 20 minutes. I would recommend you to focus only on the current year Make sure you sort that. And then once you're done, you can move on to the previous year, let's say 2024, sort that over time. Then you can do maybe 23, 22. I personally never went under 2020. I have a smart folder for 2019 and earlier. Maybe I'll sort it one day, but it's not that important for me. More important is to know that going forward, I have a system where I will not be accumulating clutter. And actually I have these already now, like from the pandemic, I have what, five, almost six years of albums um, that don't have duplicates, that don't have strange screenshots and stuff like this. And it's just a pleasure to revisit them and relieve these moments without, you know, Apple kind of does that for you. They do a selection of key photos, put some music on and play them in a slideshow. It, I do not personally enjoy it in multiple ways. I, I don't care for the music. I want to control fi how fast the slideshow goes. I want to be able to stop on a certain photo, zoom in, look at it, you know, run into the other room and show it to my husband. I want to uh, see them in the chronological order because that's the part of relieving the year for me when I see, oh, like remember in January we did that and February we traveled here and remember when I cooked this meal in, in March. I don't know, it kind of helps me um, refresh my memory. So. I find that the system works much better for memories, even though Apple has some built-in features. Uh, for reference, of course, now you have this search function that I have to say works really well. Like you can put, I don't know, dog or noodles and it's, it will likely find something, find the thing that you're looking for. I still prefer in many, many ways not to rely on uh, AI tools in my email mailbox. Um, I, I disabled the AI summary thingy here on the Mac as well, just because I have everything really well organized. I know exactly how it works when I search, like, I don't know, I just, perhaps I'll change my mind later, but I, for now, I think this system is much more powerful than whatever photo AI system exists. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you and enjoy your beautiful decluttered photo feed. Bye.